everybody. It's the Coffee with the Geek program, and it is a virtual Coffee with the Geek this time. I'm in Second Life. If For those of you who know me, I'm a big fan of Second Life for a lot of different reasons. It's really a great place to uh, explore, uh, have fun, and also uh, one of the things I've really found enjoyment out of is the art exhibits here in Second Life. So with me today is a Second Life artist. I mean, she's an artist in general, but she has a lot of her exhibits in Second Life, and we're here actually surrounded by one of her exhibits, and this is Fiona Fay. And Fiona, I came across your work and just was blown away, and I also saw your interview with Draxter, who does a, a Second Life series of, of people. And so I guess we'll just, we'll dig right in. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and as I've always said, you know, um, the arts, when, whenever you're in times of trouble, uh, especially in times of trouble, the arts can be such a soothing um, way for us to inspire us and, and meet challenges. So first of all, I guess, thank you for joining me, Fiona. And- uh, Oh, it's my pleasure. It's coffee with a geek, but uh, tell me what your favorite drink is. It may not be coffee. It is not coffee. My favorite type of drink is tea. And I drink tea every single day. Um, not coffee so much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, well, that's, that's better for you, I'm sure. So Fiona, tell me your story because the Dragster interview is really awesome and it highlights some of your work, but can you tell me kind of your backstory, your training, how, and then transition that to how you got involved in Second Life? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a great honor to be here. Um, so traditionally, I am trained in fine arts and I obtained my bachelor's of fine arts in Cornell University where my concentration was in electronic media. Later, many years later, I got a master's in visualization from Texas A&M University, where I did research in creating shaders using 3D model, modeling softwares. And my work back then was to create non-photorealistic shaders. And non-photorealistic shaders really just means that um, they're shaders that make things look as if they're not from a photograph. Um, they don't look like as they would if they were to be seen in real life. So um, I really enjoy creating these pieces with illusions of 2D art. And usually they're in styles of traditional art mediums, such as ink paintings or charcoal. And in continuation of my non-photorealistic work, I now create and exhibit my work in Second Life. And m many people know me as uh, this person that creates installations using Chinese ink brush styles, where I create 3D scenes that make the scene look as if they have been drawn on a piece of paper. Um, the pieces are generally large in scale and are immersive so that viewers can walk inside the space and see the artwork from all angles and perspectives. Um, so <laughs> when I first discovered Second Life, uh, it was actually from an online advertisement many years ago. But what really got me interested uh, was the infinite possibilities uh, that a person can do here. So I really enjoyed the fact that I could create things and share things from, uh, with the general public from right inside my computer. And I could create things in real time and share it immediately with another person. I felt like I had the whole world under my fingertips. And another great thing about Second Life is how accessible it is. And I feel like anyone can come into Second Life and experience the world um, from right in your rooms. Um, yeah, so <laughs> does that answer your question? Yes, it does. <laughs> um, so tell me about did you start doing work, you know, traditional uh, artistic work and exhibits, and do you still do that work, or is this pretty much takes most of your time and your energy? You mean in real life? Yes. Is there um, real life artists and exhibits as well? I do do real life exhibits um, off and on. Currently, my exhibits are mostly in Second Life. Um, in the past, I did exhibits where I actually had um, a projector project 
on a wall so that visitors can come inside the space and see the virtual world around them that's been projected on walls and on the ceilings and then they can create there will be like a controller in the middle of the room so they can actually control where they're singing and what they're looking at and they can move around the space from that controller in the middle of the room so really it's just imagine an empty room and really all you see is just walls and that's the exhibit where um, everything is projected on that surface what was your I guess, introduction into Second Life and I mean, was there an immediate like, wow, this is a great space for art or was it something that just, uh, you know, gradually evolved? Yeah, my, so actually I haven't told anyone this, that I discovered Second Life um, when I was still in Cornell and even though my avatar is quite new is only two years old um i had known about second life for a really long time and i actually created my first avatar back then um and i didn't really know <laughs> what i was doing really back then it was my first sort of take on creating a virtual environment and i did my bachelor's of fine arts thesis actually in second life and i created a dream world um based on my childhood nightmares uh, so basically, I, I it was my first time doing anything non photorealistic. Um, I I drew a lot of charcoal drawings and then I scanned them and then I imported them into Second Life and onto these three D objects and um, and through that I was able to recreate my childhood reoccurring dream that I had and people were able to be completely immersed in it. <laughs> yeah. That was my first time using Second Life to create art. And then never uh, did anything afterwards until recently, many, many years later. So, you know, for me, I, I, I'm in ed tech and, you know, I, I've i worked with art teachers and I haven't found a, an art teacher yet that's embraced this type of creation. Um, what could, do you think that's something that's, uh, you know, a futuristic trend? Um, what do you say to fellow art, arts, you know, artistic people that, um, that may be looking for a new palette, a new type of, of, of design and creation? Or, and would you recommend something like this for, for, for education in general, K-12 and, and higher ed? Absolutely. And I think it is being taught in schools, at least the schools that I've seen or have been to. Um, I think that they're even teaching it now in middle schools and some um, in high school as part of the art elective. It might depend on the school, though. Um, the world, I feel like, is going ever more digital, and it would be a sin if an art student did not have a course on digital art. Um, I think that the medium is becoming more popular, and with the evolution of, of technology, I am really excited to see more incorporations of digital art in the real world and how we can interact with it. I guess maybe where I was going with that is that, um, you know, I think for virtual world art, I guess, maybe to be more specific, do you think art artists are thinking of, of things like Second Life or even, you know, let's just say for elementary kids like Minecraft or, um, you know, I, I've used OpenSim, which is basically the freemium version of Second Life. Um, do you think yeah. there's there's robust um, things for art teachers there? Definitely. And I feel like especially nowadays when we have we're kind of forced to go virtual um, with the current pandemic, it's becoming really clear that this is a very viable option for teaching and just for classrooms in general. And um, I think that with platforms like Second Life, um, students can learn and interact and communicate just as easily as if they could in real life. So I think it's a great option um, as long as you know, it's, it's in a controlled environment, of course. So that kind of leads me to 
how you've created this environment. So we're sitting in one of your exhibits here and it's just it's just a really creative build. What did you use to design it? Do you use programs outside of Second Life that you bring in and, and what are those programs and, and what's the learning curve in those types of programs? So my favorite tool in Second Life is of course just the build menu. Um, while you can import fancy meshes from outside of Second Life, the build menu allows you to create a lot of amazing things within the options already given to uh, Second Life users. You can create simple geometric 3D shapes. You can chisel it, cut it, hollow it, twist it to make it into something really unique and complicated and very beautiful. Um, but outside of Second Life, I would use um, 3D modeling tools such as Maya to create more complicated geometrical shapes. Um, for this world um, that you see around us here, a lot was created using Maya because um, Second Life don't have a lot of limitations, of course, within it. So I used uh, Maya to create the mesh and then I would use Photoshop to create the texture. Um, what I will often do is I'll draw something and then I'll scan it and then I'll import it into Photoshop and then that's where I will clean up the texture and then I'll import that into Second Life and then apply that to the mesh. And that's basically the, uh, the process of creation um, and what I do to create this world around us. And what's the learning curve on that? You know, to me, it seems probably overwhelming, you know, Maya and you know Second Life like pulling those together even Photoshop can be even though it's the gold standard it's it's a pretty big bear you know tech program so how much training went into that and and is it a lot more than say your traditional arts of painting and uh, sculpture it's a steep learning curve <laughs> <laughs> yeah be um, honest yeah. be honest <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't think you can just go into it and expect to create something, you know, <laughs> uh, great immediately. Um, but that's kind of with everything, right? Um, when you're learning the piano or, you know, learning how to cook even, you start with baby steps. So I would say that you would have to begin with, um, if you want to create digital art or virtual art, begin as if you are learning traditional art. Uh, I feel like digital art is just another medium and all good artists have to have a good foundation and understanding of color, form, lighting, and just general creativity. I come from a very traditional drawing and painting background before I even started electronic media. And I feel like that has helped me a lot in all avenues of art, be it 2D or 3D. I use it to spend, uh, I used to spend hours just drawing spheres and boxes and cylinders every week for a year. <laughs> this is when I was in high school. And um, whenever I picked up a new tool or medium afterwards, I felt like it just came so much more easily. And it's because I had that foundation. So I feel like once they've gotten the basics down and depending on what kind of digital art that they're interested in, they can look into software that's best suited for them. And there's also just online tutorials um, on YouTube uh, or just anywhere. And, but again, I feel like before they jump directly into digital art, definitely get that solid foundation first. So tell me about your exhibits here, for example, where we are now. Can you tell me about this exhibit? I'll kind of pan around sure. while you chat. Sure. Right now, we're inside my Shui Mo art exhibit, and Shui Mo means ink brush painting in Chinese. So if you look around, you can see um, it's mostly monochromatic, um, and you can see some umbrellas floating on the surface of some water. And that's from the Second Life 16th birthday exhibit. I just extracted bits and pieces of it and put it in this main room. and. If you look, if you pan out a little bit more, you can see that there are some doorways around us. And when you go through each of the doorways, you'll see a different exhibit. So the one that's, if you're looking at the waterfall that's right behind us, 
and then you pan to the right, you'll see that um, there's a little doorway and going through that, you'll see a little Chinese village. Wait, sorry, that's to the left, isn't it? <laughs> if you go to the left, I get my right and left confused sometimes. Yeah, so if you're looking through that space, you'll see a Chinese village. And then you'll see like little fish uh, swimming around at the bottom. But if you go to the right, the actual right, you'll see the One Billion Rising exhibit. And that was from actually 2019. That was from last year. Um, I've created a new exhibit since then, but I haven't installed that one yet. But inside that, you'll see a lot of particles just rising from the depth of, you know, just this blackness. And that one is really um, an exhibit uh, in response to the One Billion Rising Movement, which is about sexual abuse um, or just domestic abuse. And, um, and and for that one, it's not, I think that's like only the only different, um, the only one that's different from the rest of them in that it's, in a, it's not really in the traditional Chinese ink brush style. Um, for that one, I it's it's more abstract, I would say, in that um, I try to create really, really simple drawings and forms, and those are the particles that's rising from the act, that's rising from the, the, the blackness that you see underneath. Um, yeah. And then, of course, if you go to the entrance and you open those doors, the double red doors, you'll see more of my exhibits. And those are just individual pieces, individual Shreemore pieces, as, um, and they're meant to be hung as of their 2D drawings. But if you look more closely, you'll see that they're actually 3D. Yeah. How long, and I guess, give me a time frame. how long did this exhibit take for you to pull it to completion? The one that we're standing in, the main room, or? Oh, um, the thing about this exhibit is that it's actually sort of a work in progress. So it's changed a lot since um, I first showed it. The initial exhibit, that's actually, the initial one looks very different from this one, but it's in this space and in, in this room. That one took about a month or so to complete. And for that one, um, and we didn't have all the umbrellas near us, because like I said, the umbrella is actually from the SL16B exhibit. And I also didn't have the doorways around us or even, um, or even the the rocks that surrounds us right now. I think what I kept from that exhibit are the lily pads and um, and just the general shape of this room what has changed since then. And I tend to remove and add pieces um, as I go and make room for more art. So that's hard to say. <laughs> so yeah. I guess um, from then till now, it's been a year. So if you really need a time, it, it's a year. <laughs> well, and that's really fascinating because I think it um, is an interesting facet of this type of art is that it can be added on to and, and kind of become organic and a breathable form of art, wouldn't you say? Yes, for sure. Well, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm really impressed and I'd really like to show this to the teachers that um, that I work with to say this is what can be done and this is what can, um, you know, virtual art is, is, is really powerful and what you've created here and the other exhibits that I've seen. Uh, so I hope people will come into Second Life for nothing else than to see the amazing works of art here and see the inspiration and the, the really powerful themes you've created. So I, th I thank you for that. And it truly is um, beauty. You really have to experience it by coming in. You know, I've taken quite a few pictures uh, to post for the blog, but uh, it really doesn't do it justice unless you can come in and, 
and see this. So thank you so much. Great work on that. All right, so it is time for the Speed Geek questions. So we'll spin the dial <laughs> and we'll see if there's one that doesn't quite fit you again. Most of the time I, I deal with uh, ed tech nerds. So if one doesn't fit, we'll, we'll make it. We'll tailor it just to you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so are you a gamer? And what is your game? And maybe just to add on to that question, do you think that digital art really is about, I mean, the game, the people that develop games really are doing artistic renderings, right? Oh, of course, yes. Um, actually, that's what my degree, my master's degree was about, <laughs> visualization. Yeah, um, that, that was also why I was doing so much uh, 3D art and 3D renders. Um, I am not a gamer, at least I don't consider myself a gamer, because my understanding of a gamer is someone who has spent or still spends many, many hours per day just on games, <laughs> and I don't have that much time, <laughs> although I would like to. Um, Although, of course, I do spend hours in Second Life creating this art, but I don't really consider Second Life as a game. Um, as some people, some people I'm sure do consider Second Life as a game, depending on what they use it for. But um, I use it to create art, so... Yeah, I, I am not really a gamer. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, spin the dial again here, and let's see what other question we come up with. Okay, so this is kind of an like how old are you question uh, disguised and uh, I, okay. I think you'll be fine with this one but name your first storage device so for me believe it or not it was a cassette tape <laughs> for a computer storage but it could be oh, wow. you know like a thumb drive floppy disk what was your first storage device um okay my first real storage device that I used and kept was a USB <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so you're USB. very young <laughs> well it could just be that i didn't really utilize storage devices before that you know True. um because i i remember actually the, the floppy disk i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's an oldie yeah um but the one that i actually used for myself was USB um, for projects, stuff like that. Okay. And for school and things. <laughs> okay, so your next question is what is your favorite social network? So oh, I don't really have a favorite social network. The one that I use most often is Facebook, but that's only because the people that I talk to use Facebook. If they all decided to move to WeChat, I would move with them. There's nothing really special about Facebook that, um, you know, that I, I like or dislike. I just do it because the people use it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And, and again, I think uh, your social network could be Facebook, right? Or, or Facebook or it could be Second Life in a sense, right? Yes. You know, that's a really good point. Second Life could be my, my social network. I... Yeah, I didn't even think about it like that. But you're so right. Can I change my answer to second life? <laughs> sure. <laughs> let's, second life yeah, <laughs> let's put that on the map. Let's put that on the map. Sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Why not? Right? Okay, so this is actually a good question, and I'll tailor it for you. Um, since you're not really a teacher, when, and this is a question I ask them, is who inspires you or what inspires you? So... Uh, the, the person that inspires me the most is actually my, my, my parents, especially my father. Um, my family, they came from China, um, and he's, my father has been through a lot in his life where he was forced to work in the countryside during, the, during China's Cultural Revolution. And just the stories that he's, that he's told me and just about my family and where they come from and all the stuff they had to go through just to get to where they are is so inspirational to me. And I can just 
talk about those stories for hours. <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, yeah, so it's really um, just my own family. Uh, my grandmother from my father's side, she, I feel like she could have been a wonderful artist, but she never had a chance um, given her, her social standing and, you know, just she was a woman and she was a housewife and she has so many kids and they were so poor that she didn't really get to, you know, explore that as a career. But I feel like she would have been a wonderful artist because she used to make things that are just so creative around the house. And I feel like I got my artistic talent from that side of the family and especially from my grandmother. Um, so yeah, I would say just my family inspires me, but my parents especially. That's a great, yeah. that's a great story. And yeah, we could probably hear a lot about that. And it's interesting about your grandmother. Um, you know, my mother was very artistic too. and. Uh, I often felt that was a side of her that didn't maybe get highlighted as much, but I also think she did use her creativity in raising, raising us. You know, my mother used to make these fantastic birthday uh, invitations, you know, all handmade, sent out to all my friends. And my friends will still tell me to this day, like, man, I still have that, you know, that card that your mother <laughs> made, you know. So yeah. I, I think putting your creativity into into different ways even though it may not be displayed to the world is uh is valuable important and mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful okay let's do one more question and really quickly yeah. though if, if, um, if you go on to my facebook you you can actually see some of the art that my grandmother has made like there's a oh, post wonderful. about it i can link it to you that would be great <laughs> yeah that would be yeah. wonderful so this is the question that we were we were afraid of, <laughs> which is what's your favorite educational blog? But let's just tailor it to you. <laughs> Do you follow any um, art blogs? Are there people in the art world that you follow as far as blogs or websites or their work? Um, I don't really follow blogs, but I do um, go onto websites just to be inspired by other people's art. And I guess, I guess this kind of links with the previous question about what's my favorite social media platform because I really like like looking at Instagram for art, and I, I guess I should have mentioned that um, I use Instagram. I don't really post on Instagram that much, but I look at it every day actually just to look at um, because I follow so many artists. And it's hard to just name one. Um, and I like to just look at what people are creating all the time. Does that count? <laughs> just Instagram? Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Well, Fiona, thank you so much for this conversation. And again, for the inspiration, I'm going to take this back to my friends and say, hey, this is what you can do. And in again oh, you're various so forms I love so, being here. and we'll be keeping in touch and we'll be looking for your work and i hope people will see this and say hey i've got to check out second life because there's some really great art that, that we're missing out on so yeah. so thank you you're welcome i hope your friends can come into second life and see the art for themselves i'm gonna i'm gonna go for that <laughs> <laughs>